Do you often have trouble falling asleep at night? You lie down for bed, but you're still wide awake, tossing and turning. If that is the case, this video is for you. What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, doctor of pharmacy, gut health expert, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve digestive problems so they can look and feel their best. Not getting enough quality sleep makes it incredibly difficult to have energy during the day, to feel motivated, and make healthy food choices. In fact, lacking good sleep actually makes makes you crave things like sugar, carbs, and coffee to provide you that boost of energy that you're looking for. Lacking sleep can decrease your testosterone levels, making you more likely to lose muscle and gain body fat. And it also makes you less likely to have good digestion and proper gut health. Getting quality sleep actually begins far before you turn off your bedside lamp. Fortunately though, there are many small things that you can do to help you fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. And none of these 12 things that I'm going to talk about require that you take sleeping pills or even supplements. Even doing just a few of these regularly can dramatically improve the quality of your sleep. All right, let's check out what these 12 are. Number one, I call catch the bus. Basically means go to sleep when you feel tired. If you feel tired, that means your melatonin level has increased. Melatonin is the hormone that your body produces that helps you go to sleep. If you've ever noticed that you feel really tired about an hour before you normally would go to sleep, but then you continue to stay awake and then around your normal bedtime you seem like you're wide awake you have missed the bus you get the metaphor number two is limit your caffeine intake in the afternoon and evening not everybody's affected by caffeine i've actually met people that drink caffeine all the way up to the minute they go to sleep literally and they sleep well that's great for them but if you're not one of these superhuman individuals understand that caffeine can stay in your bloodstream for a long time as much as 12 hours if you're somebody that does feel feel jittery after you drink a cup of coffee, I would consider only drinking caffeine in the morning and make it at least 60 minutes after you wake up. Number three is napping. In general, it's probably best to avoid napping at all if possible, as it can make it more difficult to maintain a normal sleep-wake cycle. If you are going to take a nap, I'd probably try to limit it to a 15 to 20 minute power nap in the afternoon and not a three hour where did the entire day go nap. Number four is morning light. Getting light exposure in the morning is great for your circadian rhythm, which is the sleeping waking cycle that I previously mentioned. Obviously don't look directly at the sun, but try to get your body and eyeballs facing some kind of sunlight for a couple minutes in the morning. Number five is avoid screens and bright light about one hour before bedtime. This is the exact opposite of what we just talked about. While we want bright light in the morning, we want to avoid bright light in the evening. Your brain interprets bright lights and blue lights from screens as morning, and it can have a stimulant effect, but avoiding screens in the evening is not always possible and you may just want to enjoy your favorite TV show. I probably use my phone or look at a screen probably up to five minutes before I go to bed. This is just because I want to. If you're like me, getting a pair of blue light blocker glasses may be a really helpful idea. As advertised, they block blue light. Right here, I have mine. I usually put these on about an hour before I go to sleep and I usually sleep very well. So whether they actually help by blocking the blue light or it's just a placebo effect. I don't really care because I'm sleeping better. Number six is make a bedtime routine. So do the same thing in the amount of time leading up to bed every day, preferably an hour before bed. This can help unwind, relax your brain, let your body know that it's about time to go to sleep, whether it be reading a book or enjoying your favorite TV show. Having a set routine can be a helpful strategy. Number seven is avoiding stressful tasks in the hour before going to bed. Cortisol and melatonin are hormones that are opposite of one another. When cortisol is highest, melatonin is lowest and vice versa. When melatonin is highest, cortisol is lowest. Therefore, doing stressful activities that raise cortisol are as a result going to drop your melatonin and probably make you feel less tired. I understand that sometimes just things need to get done. And in those cases, sometimes it can actually relax you to do that stressful task, get it out of the way, and then you're able to relax and sleep easier knowing that task XYZ has been completed. Number eight is set a bed time, wake time schedule. Going to bed and then waking up at the same time every day helps your body get into a little bit of a rhythm and therefore you'll notice that you may start to feel tired at the same time every evening when you want to. If you're somebody that likes to enjoy their weekends and stay up a little bit later, at least try to do this on the five weekdays. Number nine is use a white noise machine or sleep with a fan on. This one is one of my personal favorites. I always sleep with a fan on and it's usually not even pointed at me. I just like it for the 
noise. The noise is just another cue for the brain that it's time to sleep. You also have the advantage of the fan noise being able to drown out random sounds from outside, whether it be somebody yelling, car alarm, thunderstorm. You're going to be less likely to wake up in the middle of the night from being interrupted by these things. Number 10 is cool it down. Trying to sleep in a bedroom that's too warm makes it very difficult to sleep. You may need to experiment a little bit with temperatures to see which one's best for you. A fan is also a good option here if you don't have air conditioning. Number 11 is avoid large meals before going to bed. Having to digest a lot of food can make it very difficult to stay asleep. It also can lead to heartburn right around bedtime because you're eating a lot of food and then laying down. I prefer not to eat anything at least three hours prior to bed. I understand this is definitely not possible for everybody. So if this is the case, I would try to limit yourself just to having a snack before bed instead of a large meal. And finally, number 12, last but not least, and this is my personal favorite out of this list is mouth tape. If you don't know what this is, you tape your mouth shut with a strip of tape. This forces you to only breathe through your nose while you're sleeping. To be honest, it's a little bit weird right when you first start, but after a few days, you'll be used to it. I definitely was a mouth breather while sleeping, and most nights I honestly would have to wake up in the middle of the night to pee, but from using mouth tape for the past year and a half or so, I rarely have to wake up in the middle of the night anymore to use the bathroom. Also, my mouth no longer feels like the Sahara Desert when I wake up. There are a lot of different types of mouth tape you can use. I prefer just using a strip of paper tape along my entire mouth. That is all 12. To quickly recap, we discussed one, catching the bus, two, caffeine, three, naps, four, morning light, five, blue light blockers, six, bedtime routines, seven, stressful tasks, eight, sleep schedule, nine, white noise, 10, cool it down, 11, avoiding large meals before bed, and 12, my number one personal favorite, mouth tape. Not all of these suggestions may be for you, and some of them may just not be an option whatsoever or something that you're willing to try. But if you are having sleeping problems, couldn't hurt to pick a few of these strategies and try them out. That is all for today. If you've tried any of these strategies, please let me know how they work down below in the comments section. Please give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this video. If you're new to my channel, I post a new full-length video every Monday evening in YouTube Shorts all throughout the week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.